And Tyrone Taylor, numbers 24 and 21, go deep to receive for Boston College. They won the toss. They're taking the ball early. They're going into the win. And Penn State will kick it off with Greg Montgomery doing the kicking. There are more freshmen and sophomores on this Penn State football team than any team Joe Paterno has ever had. This kick will go way beyond the end zone and bounce up into the stand. And we'll look at Doug Flutie now out of Natick Mass, who starts at quarterback, and he's an exciting player. Troy Stratford has recovered during the two-week off period, getting over a knee injury. Jim Brown will start at fullback, though Bob Bistick will be in there some. Brian Brennan is a wide receiver at 5'10", 180. Gerald Phelan is a flanker at 6 feet, 185. And so we begin at Foxborough on a windy, cool October afternoon. Moving the big people around. Gieselman, the tight end, coming to the near side. And Flutie stands up on the first down, throws quickly, pass good. Gerald Phelan, number 20, as he gets the ball out near the 28. Second down, two and a half coming up. And up front, it's Scott Gieselman, 6'5", 235 at tight end. Sean Regan at tackle, 265. Mark Bardwell at guard, 260. Jack Bicknell, the center, at 255. Glenn Reagan, the right guard, 255. And Mark McDonald, the right tackle, at 260. It'll be second down, short three for Boston College. They send Phelan in motion. And they run it with Stratford, cutting it back over the 30. And out to about the 33 for a first down. So at least there is some degree of success in the opening snap for BC. Penn State lines up with White, Carraher, Gattuso, and Sefter, the big people down in a four-man front. The linebackers, and they're all good ones, Alexander, Radisek, and Masiantano, Masiantano, number 84, with Sidnor, Fruhan, Hamilton, and Zordich in the defensive secondary. Their secondary hurt, no question, by an All-American Mark Robinson being hurt and being out for the season. Moody back again on first down to put it up. Looking and looking and looking, looking and looking and looking. Now he's got to run it some, and he finds a little daylight and gets back just beyond the line of scrimmage. Penn State secondary that time didn't give him a thing. There was no blitz, no pressure particularly from the defensive front, and uh, they just simply stepped back and covered, and they covered very well. The last football team, the rush, number 22, Doug Flutie, was Texas A&M, and he burned them for three touchdowns and over 300 yards. The reason is Flutie is such a good scrambler. Teams are reluctant to blitz it. It is second down and nine. The ball is on the Boston College 34. Just getting underway. Flutie still got it. Now finds it. A little crease and runs it across the 40 and up near a first down. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. So it looks like Penn State has decided to uh, cover and make Flutie handle the ball. The rushing ratio is three men rushing, eight defending, and with eight men defending, as we watch Doug Flutie, have no one to throw to. Eight men defending three receivers. The advantage lies with the defense, but there is what uh, Flutie has to do. When they start in defend, he's got to keep the ball, either run with it, and be very patient. Third down and one from the 30, from the 42. Ball goes to Steve Strawn, and Strawn slashing over the right side behind McDonald, Reagan, and Gieselman has the first down for Jack Bicknell's Eagles. There's Jack Bicknell, one of the finest coaches in the business. Very fine offensive football coach. Created an atmosphere for Flutie to excel. Flutie being five foot nine, very good scrambler. As we look at Boston College NCAA statistics, they're sixth, seventh, and eighth in offensive numbers. Ball is at the 49 of BC. First down for the Eagles. And Penn State still showing the four man front. So they are still in a covering posture. The pass is away. The pass good to Stratford coming out of the backfield. And Troy is knocked down at the 47 by Scott Radisek, a 6'3", 235-pound senior from Pittsburgh. Texas finally got on the board in a ball game down in the Southwest Conference. The Red Raiders of Tech giving them all they want in that ball game. And Auburn is leading Florida at halftime, 21 to 7. The War Eagles got out quickly, 14-0 lead. And Georgia now leading Temple by 10. 
Temple is one of the teams that uh, these two teams here today both played. Penn State beat them by five. Boston College by three. It is second down and six. From the 47, Flutie quickly over the middle. Tight end, Gieselman. First down, Boston College. Penn State, 37. And Flutie is now Boston College all-time leader in pass completions with 369. One thing that Flutie looks for over the middle is a six-foot-five tight end. Gieselman, you can identify him very easily. The tight ends last year, fans, caught 16 passes against Penn State for 320 yards. Right back to the well, Flutie went. Well, you're in this, uh, the, the type of coverage that Penn State is in, the Frank, that tight end dragging across the middle is available to you almost every time. Flutie going with it, goes wide with a pitch to Stratford. Stratford gets around the corner, Troy turns it out of bounds. He had another yard of real estate on that side. He's going for a touchdown. Last this Troy Stratford, number 32, two, excuse me, number 22, he was the, the leading rusher as a freshman last year. Now he is has a 6.2 average, but the thing is, fans, he hasn't played since the third game of the season. After the first play of the West Virginia game, he got hurt. His knee was injured, and he's back now well. Big back in the ball game. This past week in their practice sessions, uh, Jack McDowell said they really went at it, though. So they hammered on each other, trying to get themselves in game condition. It's a first down. The ball is near the Penn State 25. Pressure zone. Flutie's pass away. Good to Phelan. Flutie is nailed as he released the ball, but he pops up and helps the Penn State man to his feet. Watch Flutie roll to his left. Now, Phelan is going to be out in the flank because covering 101 as the blitz was on. Hamilton was rushing. Look how wide open he is. You can see the secondary playing very, very deep. Sutter was way back. Too much of a cushion this close to the goal line, but Penn State has had trouble in the secondary fans, and that's why they are playing so loose and careful. Flutie is now 4 for 4, 31 yards. And it's second down and one at the Penn State 16. First quarter of play. Opening possession of the game. Stratford goes in motion. They give the ball back to Brian Brennan. Reversing it right to left. And he's got the first down for Boston College. One thing we should mention, the Penn State defense is not as dominant as we are accustomed to seeing in years past. For the first time I ever remember, the opponents have more offensive yardage than Penn State does in the first eight ball games. Something very rare indeed. As we are noticing the Boston College team mixing up passing on first down and running on second and third down. Very successful. That's about the 12-yard stripe where Boston College has it. First down. And they've got Brennan now moving. Gieselman goes to the wide side of the field up the top of the picture there. And Flutie back to throw. Goes down the middle with it. Threw it too high. Yet Stratford, Troy Stratford out of the backfield was open in the end zone and the ball took off and he missed him. Second and ten. This is where down close to the goal line Boston College has had terrible time scoring. It leaves some scars and Keith mentioned earlier they worked on this hard in the last two weeks to try to improve their punch when they get down there. But remember, fans, passing teams have a hard time sticking it in the end zone against a good defensive team. They do have Bob Bistek at fullback. Bob is back from a broken arm. And he's 6'2", 240, so that should help. But they're lined up now in a one-back formation which reads pass for them, though they don't do that. They give it inside to Jim Brown, the starting fullback. And Brown gets a couple of yards just over the 10 to the 9. So here they are again. They're looking at third down and long. Well, on first down is a good passing down against Penn State because they play the run first. They single cover the wide receivers. The, they, and they were open, and uh, Flutie missed him in the, in the goal, on behind the goal line for a touchdown. As we look at Joe Paterno, the real statesman of the coaching profession, right now the leading coach in uh, winning percentage in America. Ball is on the 10 where it is third down. Third down and eight for a first down, 10 for a touchdown. And Flutie, straight back. No pressure. No pressure. He goes with it in the touchdown. Brennan.
you may have seen a very very important moment in this football game Boston College taking the kickoff went right down the field got it in the end zone 13 plays and 80 yards for a touchdown here's the extra point try by Kevin Snow it is good so you've got nine minutes and 23 seconds to play in the first quarter and Boston College is impressive on their opening offensive possession to lead it seven to nothing. Boston College getting on the scoreboard first something they have not been consistent in doing against quality football teams their touchdown march six passes seven runs when you give Doug Flutie this much time fans look to the left only two men rushing Boston College has five men blocking this spread to defense is impossible to cover that close to the goal line if with two men rushing as you see number 92 I guess it was it uh, hand was trying to cover him but he was way late getting there John Williams and Kevin Bow are the deep people now for Penn State as the kickoff goes high into the wind and is quite short at the nine to John Williams and Williams the starting tailback comes up across the 20 to about the 22. Let's watch the strategy. Brennan is the split in, lining up at tailback. Fans, why is he lining up at tailback? He's going to shift over to the wingback position so that a linebacker is covering. You get a physical mismatch. Number 41 is a defensive lineman. He's the one lining up in front of him. If Brennan, number 13, had lined up and split in, he would have been covered by the halfback. Look how wide open he is as Septa gets completely lost on the play. Yeah, Steve was standing over there yelling, help. Help, help. <laughs> but he, Brennan is so quick. First play for Penn State, a fumble. And Boston College had two people diving for the ball as Tony Mumford, the fullback, could not come away with it cleanly, and it's Penn State's ball. Strang and Mumford did not handle it well, and it was almost a catastrophe for the Lions. Loss is back to the 17. First play of the ball game. Mike Ruth is the leading tackle, number 68. Watch him use his hands. Coaches say he's the strongest player on Hayden, the sort of strongest player that they've got. And the most intense player. You see him come in, watch him take the left arm and strip the ball out. And uh, Penn State was very fortunate to get it back. Looked like Mumford was late getting started, too, Frank. It was a draw play, I think, Keith. Fake pass and run. Strang now is going to put it up. Sets up a screen for John Williams, and Williams can't hold on to the ball. And so Penn State comes out jittery in their first possession with Doug Strang, a junior at quarterback from Linwood, New Jersey, 6'1", 201. John Williams, the tailback, is 195 pounder. Mumford is 205 pounds at fullback, but quite quick. Kevin Bow, wide receiver, 5'9", 175, a great speedster, and one of the best in the country at wide receiver, Kenny Jackson, 5'11", and 175. So here's Penn State now sitting on third down and 16. Strang back to throw. Gets his pass away down the middle for Jackson incomplete. Covering on the play, George Ratajkowski. The offensive front for Penn State, Kurt Bowman tied in, 240. Ron Heller tackle 255. Todd Moles, guard 255. Hayden, the center, is a 250. McGinnis, guard 250. And Stan Short, 250. But Penn State now in front formation with George Reynolds standing to kick, averaging 44 yards. He's got a good strong wind at his back, some pressure on him, not a particularly good kick. Kicks it away from Brian Brennan, and the ball will go out of bounds up around the Boston College 43 with 8.09 to play in the first quarter. 41-yard punt, Boston College lead. It is a cool, windy afternoon in Foxborough, Mass. As Boston College gets the ball back first down at their own 43. The temperature headed for the 40s and perhaps to the low 30s tonight. Flutie sets him up. This time he goes to the run on the first snap on first down as Bob Bistek. Bistek sticks his head in there for about three. Right now, let's check in with Jim Lampley. North Carolina has fallen behind at College Park, Maryland after the Tar Heel punter fumbled away the snap on their first punt attempt. Maryland took it in. Willie Joyner scoring on this seven-yard run. It's 7-0 Terrapins at College Park. Back to you, Keith. 
Thank you, Jimmy. That's a big ball game being played in the Atlantic Coast Conference. North Carolina undefeated. Second down seven. The pass over the middle. Flutie drills his man, and he can't come away with it. Intended receiver, the tight end, Gieselman. And that time, Scott drew a crowd. Keith was saying before the ball game, as we looked at the defensive coaching of the Boston College team, if Boston College could score first and stop Penn State on their first possession, all doubts would be erased. And that's exactly what they did. Very, very impressive so far, the Boston College Eagles. 46 yard line, where it is third down and seven. That is, that is an atypical number for a Penn State defensive unit right there. Not typical at all. And Flutie is straight back. Gets his pass away, and the pass is complete to Phelan. And I don't know how he caught it, because Radisek was back there on the coverage, and so was Don Graham, but he drilled it right between them, and Phelan came down with it. Phelan has got great hands, catches the ball in a crowd. As you can see, number 17, Hamilton is right there. Radisek inside of him. The throw had to be right on the target. Phelan cradles it in for the first down. Gerald's now caught uh, three for 26 yards. Big numbers, first quarter of play. Ball is at the Penn State 45 for the Eagles. And Flutie going right with it. Out it goes to Troy Stratford. Gets a block on the corner, gets to the 40. And Harry Hamilton, the strong safety, or as they call him at Penn State, the hero back brings him down. The Boston College coaches told me yesterday that if they could just pick their spot to run the ball, it would help their pass protection, their passing so much. The reason is that Penn State has to be able to play the run some, if otherwise they can just continue to drop back. Pick the spot for the runs. They've done a good job so far. Second down, five from the Penn State 40. That's Phelan in motion, coming to the same side as Brennan. And Flutie looks that way, then goes back the other way. And it was a bad decision. Number 49, Carl Pelagata, the smaller of the tight ends, was over there. They were trying to set up a tight end screen, and Rogers Alexander read it and really drilled it. Gieselman, Keith, hurt his ankle on that uh, reception a little while ago and left the game. Now he's coming back in. Big target, six foot five. Very critical for him to be in this football game for the Boston College hopes and efforts. Especially on third down and five. Go, beat, Double wide to the bottom of the picture. Here's the blitz. Ludi throws it away. It was Radisek, number 97, coming after Doug Flutie full bore. He escaped the blocker and was home free, and Flutie just had to dump the ball, and so BC will kick it away. Well, Penn State was very successful on third down with a blitz. You would ask, why don't they blitz more? The reason is they have a secondary that has very much problems against the pass, and they're fearful of getting burned. Kevin Bow, number 11, is the return man for Penn State on the punt. The kick is very, very short and out of bounds. So it's a very poor punt by John Mahalik into the wind. And with six minutes and ten seconds remaining to play in the first quarter, you've got timeout with Boston College leading seven to nothing. The defensive alignment for Boston College, Thomas Harrington, Ruth in the middle, Swanky Lubisher, Diossi and Von Nessen are the linebackers. Ratajkowski, Russell, Pereira, and Thurman, the secondary. That was a 19-yard punt. The ball is at the 21. Strang gives it to John Williams, and Williams takes a wallop from Mike Ruth, the nose guard. Ruth made a sensational play. He slanted behind the center, and watch it on replay, fans. Take a look at Watch him slant to the left, and the center fails to block him, and the guard... Uh, McGinnis tries to pick him up, but Ruth has the advantage on the side of the play, and he hits Williams head on right there for a short game. Good and at 255 yards, a big sophomore from Norristown, PA, turned John the other way. They give him a yard on the carry. And on second and nine, Strang sets to throw, looks for Bow, goes to Bow, got him, and first down, Lions at the 40. Ratajkowski gave him a little cushion, and Kevin Bow is a very, very quick senior from Deer Park, New York. Kevin Bow, number 11, returns punts, returns kickoffs, has seven Penn State records, very, very quick. You can see he's wide open as Ratajkowski is giving him a good cushion. Number 15, Thur and Thurman, number 17, help on the tackle. That's 22 receptions for Kevin this year. 
He's averaging just under 16 yards per catch. And it's first down Lions at their own 41. They trail seven to nothing. And it's Mumford the fullback. And he's got a yard, maybe two. Scott Harrington, def uh, defensive tackle, number 52, and Ruth 68. Bring him down. It's still a close ball game between Texas and Texas Tech. The Longhorns had a lot of folks hurt going into that ball game. Georgia Bulldogs continue undefeated as they whip Temple 31 to 14. And uh, SMU probably let them down a little bit after their loss to uh, Texas. Syracuse and Pitt all even in the fourth quarter. Syracuse, the orange, giving them all they want. It's second down and eight. Blitz his own. Strang gets it away in time. It is almost intercepted. Off the hands of the tight end, Kirk Bowman, and then off the hands of Tony Thurman. Thurman, the free safety, just had nothing between him except some artificial rug and a lot of fresh air. You can see the blitz is coming, and uh, Strang has to get rid of the ball a little bit early. Bowman was just a blocking tight end last year. The transition to being a receiver has been pretty smooth, according to the coaches. Thurman had the ball for a moment, but couldn't handle it, and it goes incomplete. And it's third down and eight now for Penn State from the 43. Strang back. Over the middle with it. Incomplete. Pass intended for Kevin Bow. They go down the middle to the smallest guy on the field. 5'9", 175. Ivy League scores, games nearing completion, and some of them finished now. Harvard and Brown in the fourth quarter. It is punting time for Penn State. George Reynolds is in. First kick for the 41-yarder. Brennan. Holy Cross is undefeated. Crusaders a good football team. Not a good kick, but it's going to take a Penn State roll. With the wind at his back now, Reynolds has really not been able to get the ball up into the air. He's been able to get 41 and 40 out of the two kicks. And BC will have it first down at their own 18. College. Let's go back to the punt by Reynolds now. He's a fine kicker, but watch. The ball from the hand to the foot is going to be affected by the wind. The wind is that strong out there. And normally, Frank, that's where it's going to cause you the most trouble. You can see that uh, Reynolds drops the ball further than most kickers. He's dropping the ball about two feet. Most kickers try to drop it about eight inches. On the ground, Boston College attacks on first down from the 18 in Troy Stratford. A sophomore out of Linden, New Jersey, slashes up near the 30 for a first down. Keith, that's the first run that Boston College has used on first down. They've thrown consecutively on every first down, keeping the Penn State defense off balance, picking their spots to run the football, and Troy Stratford really looks good so far in this ball game. Remember, fans, he missed four weeks of practice from the, and, and gained from the injury back against West Virginia. Ball is at the 31 of Boston College. First down, Stratford 34 yards on four carries now. And on first down, it's Flutie to throw. Looking and looking. Throws quickly over the middle. Brennan has it. And Brian tucks it away for a gain out to the 37. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football this week. The Washington Redskins and the San Diego Chargers. It is still Air Coriel down in San Diego, but Dan Fouts is struggling with a rotator cuff injury and probably will not play this week either. Ed Luther will be... Uh, in at quarterback for them. And of course, you pretty well know the story of how well the Redskins are doing this year. Second down and four. And Flutie gives the ball to Stratford. A bit of a staggering start for Troy. He really didn't have good momentum when he got to the line of scrimmage, but still he struggles on and picks up about three. Once again, here's Jim Lampley. 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter in Austin, Texas, not yet out of the woods. They just got a 47-yard field goal from Jeff Ward, but they've lost two fumbles and an interception. Still not moving the ball well. They lead 10-3 with 11 minutes to go. Now back to Keith Jackson in Boston. Okay, Jimmy, the ball is at the 38. It's third down. They need three. Need three to keep it. Strong and Brown line up in the I formation. And Strawn has it going for the corner, going for the marker, and he gets his helmet and the ball past it. Chris Sidner brought him down, but it's a first down for B.C. 
Strong is their short yardage designated hitter, Keith. He's a high jumper in, in uh, high school, jumping six foot seven, 205 pounds. He's a good leaper and good on short yardage, and he substitutes for Tra Stratford on those situations. <laughs> Giaquinto goes out at wide receiver now. And Gerald Phelan comes back in. Gerard Phelan. That is first down for Boston College at the 41. Lutie still got it. Pass down the middle. Good. Pass is good to Pelagata. And it's a first down Boston College at the Penn State 33. Boy, Keith, Doug Flutie is a courageous young man. The coaches say he, you cannot intimidate this young man. 5'9", had a sensational career. He's moving outside to launch the ball from multiple points, upsetting the rush, but watch him drill the ball to the substitute tight end, Felagotti, who catches it, cradles it in for another big first down. Flutie's 8 out of 12, 84 yards and a touchdown here in the first quarter with a minute and a half to go. And from the 33, he's going to put it up again. Gets pressure, goes deep with it in the end zone. And Brennan can't get it. Intercepted by Penn State. Mike Zordich, number 43, a big sophomore from Youngstown, Ohio, outreached him for it. Zordich is a strange story. Fans, he was an outside linebacker when the season started. Now he's playing free safety and made his third inter interception of the season. You can see Brennan going deep, but Zordich, number 43, is going to outjump him. He's got to come down in possession of the ball. One foot in bounds, and he does. Just a great play by the young sophomore free safety. Very young football team. From the 20 now, the Lions will come up. They send Bow to the top of the picture and Kenny Jackson to the bottom of the picture. Mumford and John Williams are lined up, and it's Williams, the tailback, and the good offensive line surge as he comes across the 25 to about the 26. Boston College uh, offense has kept the Tackle ball going Williams into this big shot. win, kept Penn State's offense off on the bench uh, when they had the advantage. As we look at Mike Sardich, as I said, just a sophomore. Made an outstanding play, playing play the ball the play. in his height and coming down with a Second key interception. Second down and a short four coming up for Penn State now. And we see what an opportunistic team that Penn State has been this year. They've always been there. Humble. Penn State gets it back. Number 58 covered at the center, Nick Hayden, when the ball fell loose. That's twice that Penn State has dropped the ball and uh, very fortunate to come up with the recovery. As we look at the big, big offensive line that Penn State traditionally has. Let's, let's watch the ball bounce out of Mumford. He's the same one that fumbled it early in the ball game. The ball comes out, Hayden number... Uh, 58 is right on top of it and, and beats uh, I think Harrington put his helmet on it and knocked it out of there. Skeeter Nichols comes in at uh, fullback now, blocking for Strang's pass downfield incomplete. Bow had broken off the pattern and started to curl back. Jackson was going deep and nobody was close to the ball. What is Boston College doing, fans? They are blitzing seven people on a critical down. Most teams will not blitz over five or six. Boston College said to me yesterday, we're going to take chances. He blitzed seven, picked him up man for man, straying over through the receiver. He's one for six and 20 yards, and you've got eight seconds to play in the first quarter. With BC leading Penn State by a score of 7 nothing. Second down and 10 for the Lions from the 30. That's Jackson, number 82 in motion. Strang gives the ball to John Williams. And Williams fights his way to the 35, close to the 36. Steve Diossi and Paul Shaw bring him down at the end of the first quarter. So after 15 minutes, it's Boston College 7 and Penn State nothing. You know. Well, the Duke Blue Devils got a win today over Old Foe Georgia Tech by six, their first of the year. Into the ball game for Penn State now. The celebrated youngster, D.J. Dozier from Virginia meets Virginia. 195-pounder, averaging better than six yards a carry. He's number 42. Skeeter Nichols in there at the linebacking position. Pressure on Strang. Passes thrown away incomplete. 
And that is something that Boston College wants to do. They want to get after Doug Strang, and they got right in his face that time. Steve Diossi, number 99, is a big linebacker, 240 pounds. You can see the all-out blitz, man. Here comes the strong safety, 41, Diossi, 99. The ends, everybody's coming. Let's see how much pressure Strang does have on him. Diossi just won't give up. Finally, others came in, forcing the bad throw. And George Reynolds is in the punt, into the wind. He gets it out and hits it very, very well to Brennan back at the 24. And Brian is pulled down around the 30. Fans, would you believe just how dominant Boston College was over Penn State? Take notice of all the numbers on the right. And remember that Boston College was going into the win. Penn State had the win to the advantage. What a great quarter Boston College had. Ball is marked at the 29. For BC, they lead seven to nothing, and Doug Flutie brings them up with Beestick at fullback and Stratford at tailback. Here comes the blitz by Penn State, and he's checking it off. Give the ball to Stratford, and Stratford comes popping through the left side, and then bangs into Carmen Masi Antonio, middle linebacker. Penn State has not blitzed very often this year for the reasons I've already said trouble in the secondary and the reason is blitz are accompanied by man for man coverage and Penn State has been beaten on that occasion and they're very reluctant to do it but it looks like they're going to have to don't you agree Keith I think so Stratford got it up near the 34 second down at about six Jim Quinto is in brought a play with him Flutie back to throw goes with it short and it's incomplete Hamilton covering Brennan on the play. Ball was on Brennan's hands, but Hamilton hit him hard and knocked it loose. Well, Navy gave Pitt all the Pitt could handle, losing by seven last week. And on the third down, they're taking it to the wall pretty well, with Alabama and Mississippi State locked up in a good one. And Tennessee beat Rutgers seven to nothing. Not a whole lot of offense in the ball game, but still Johnny Majors and the balls will take it, I'll bet you. There's an old saying, a win is a win is a win is a win, Keith. Sir. Ohio Any coach State believes that. One big today. Third down. Long six. Phelan going in motion and Flutie back. Goes deep with it. It is caught. That's Stratford. Foot race to the goal. Stratford down there. You had Brennan down there. It looked to me like the ball went off the hands of quarterback Mark Fruhan of Penn State and fell into the waiting arms of Troy Stratford at 66 yards and a touchdown. For Stratford, number 23 was very alert. He was behind the secondary. When the ball was deflected, he wrapped it up and ran the rest of the way for the touchdown. Kevin Snow's extra point is good. Oh, at 13.55 to go in the first half, Boston College leads Penn State 14 to nothing. Let's take a look, another look at it. You're going to, uh, Flute is going to go deep. Now, remember, fans, in college, if it should touch Brennan, it's eligible, two eligible receivers can catch the ball in college. I don't believe that's the case in pro ball, but college, if one of your receivers touches it, it, it can be deflected and another one can catch it for the completed pass. Let's see it from a different angle and see whether Fruhan, in fact, did, number 92, touch it or whether Brennan, number 13, deflected. Brennan, number 13, it goes through Brennan's hands, I believe, Keith. Yeah, both of them looked like they had a piece of it, and there was old Troy just waiting to take it home and he did and it's good 66 yards here's Brennan we can isolate on him and tell for sure if in fact the ball goes through his hands Flutie puts it right on the money as can't tell really who touched it but who cares it's a touchdown for Boston College the Boston College fans certainly don't mind so Penn State falling behind early here 14 to nothing there's Troy 
in the opening kickoff against West Virginia, the only loss by Boston College. He was injured. Knee and uh, minor concussion on uh, trying to return the opening kickoff, and he's just been able to recover and come back for this ball game. John Williams makes the catch in the end zone and will not return it, and Penn State will go to work from their 20. Well, it's uh, one of those. I was talking with Joe Paterno earlier today, and he said there have been moments this season when it's been a pure joy because you really do have to coach in turning your team around, and it's been rewarding in the aspect of turning them around from an 0-3 start. But there have been other times when you feel like the sky is falling on you, and this could be another one of those days because a ricochet touchdown can be a demoralizing thing. So let's see what Penn State can do with it now as they fall behind by two touchdowns. This is Dozier, D.J. Dozier, and he loses his footing. Might have tripped just short of the 30. Give him about eight or nine, or eight yards on that carry. There's one player that's got the coaches and fans all excited about the future of Penn State, and that is D.J. Dozier. That's what he's done so far this year. 677 rushing yards. Four consecutive 100-yard rushing games. Just an outstanding player, fans. He's big, fast, loves to run with that football, and got good moves with it. They've given him seven yards on that carry. So it is second down, a short three for the Lions. Swing to throw it. Runs away from the pressure. And then falls down over his own man. Back on the 20. Todd Moles was trying to protect him. There was outside pressure coming from uh, Mike Ruth and David Thomas. And Strang just ran out of room. Now Texas, uh, that manpower, that deep bench that they have at Texas beginning to show up in that ball game. And Maryland is leading Carolina 10 to nothing. Keith, the Boston College defensive staff have done a magnificent job of keeping the Penn State offense off balance. Defending one down, rushing the next, and Strang seems confused so far in this game. Third down and 10, Penn State from the 20. Has good time, throws for Jackson. And the pass is incomplete. Coming across, Tony Thurman. Thurman thought he had a chance to intercept it, but he and Jackson collided. The ball fell away, and it's fourth down. From behind the quarterback fans, the thing to watch is Thurman breaking on the ball. Here's what every coach wants to see in a safety man. He's got his eyes on it. He comes up in front of the receiver and comes close to intercepting. Just a fine play by Tony Thurman, number 17. Reynolds in to punt. Three. So far, he's done 41, 40, and 41. This is his fourth kick. Pressure on. He just barely gets it out of there. It was tipped. They flattened the punter, but the ball was tipped. And it's a poor kick. And Boston College gets it after a 15-yard punt at the Penn State 36-yard line. Lions having their troubles with 12-17 to play in the first half. Grubele is the Boston College man that is going to tip the ball. And once you get your hand on it, Frank, you can go ahead and flatten that punter. That's, that's correct. If the defensive team touches the ball, the kicker loses his protection. And uh, number 51, Grubele, got his hands on the ball. He does rough the kicker, but it's no penalty. And it's Boston College first down at the Penn State 36. Balin and Brennan are the wide people. Pelagata's in at tight end. And Flutie back to throw on first down. Gets it off over the middle. It's Brennan inside the five. From behind the defense, the post route. I don't know where the safety man Zardish was, but we have one-on-one -on -one coverage. The one thing that... Uh, Penn State didn't walk. Freehound was trying to cover Brennan, a mismatch in speed. Brennan is going to go down and inside. The safety man, Zordis, should have been deep. Remember, fans, he was a linebacker, we said early. You can see he was up in front. He should have been back playing center field. Completed pass and another scoring opportunity. First and goal to go. Boston College, Penn State, five. Flutie hands to the fullback in the middle, Jim Brown. A couple of yards for Brown. Jack Bicknell there on the sideline. This is where Boston College has had a trouble scoring the from inside the 10-yard line. As we look at Jack Bicknell, he's really upset about that last 
play. It looked like they probably busted their blocking. It was a trap play right up the middle, meaning that the fullback was trying to punish the middle of the Penn State defense. Unsuccessful. Startling numbers. Total offense so far. Boston College 250. Penn State 33. Second down and goal from near the four. Booty gives it to Stratford running for the corner. Touchdown. It's strong. Steve Strong, 33. That high jumper showed some speed, didn't he? <laughs> he did, Keith. What happened is that uh, Strong is going to start off tackle. Watch fans, watch him start off tackle and then bend it to the outside as Beastick makes the key block. Watch number 40, block 27, Sider to the inside, and Strong has the speed to race for the corner and make the touchdown. With 11 minutes and three seconds to go in the first half, Kevin Snow trying to make it 21 to nothing. Brennan is your holder from the 10. The kick is good. Are you surprised? Yes. Welcome to the club. Steve Strong's four yard run paying off for Boston College third touchdown and a 21 0 lead with 11.03 to go in the first half. Kevin Bow and John Williams are the deep people. And Brian Waldron will kick it off for Boston College. With the win. Very high and very deep. Bow will not return it. Now let's go to New York and check in with Jim Lampley. Pittsburgh just picked up a miracle victory over Syracuse. They lost the ball with less than a minute to go, got it back on an interception, then won the ball game on a 43-yard field goal by freshman walk-on kicker Pat Viancourt, the first field goal attempt of Viancourt's career. He was kicking it because Snuffy Everett, the regular Pitt kicker, had missed two earlier in the game. Victory for Pitt, Keith. Close call for the Panthers. Penn State is starting on the 20-yard line for the fourth time in this ball game, and they've punted on each possession. D.J. Dozier, the tailback, is hit behind Scott Harrington, 52, penetrating along with David Thomas, and then knocking down for a loss back at the 17. I'll tell you this, when you get that Dozier behind the line of scrimmage, you have moved quickly. Well, Harrington has the quickness. He played nose guard last year, was a linebacker defensive end. As we look at that young man, Doug Flutie, one of the most phenomenal football players that I've seen play in a long, long time. Look at those numbers. High impressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ten and a half minutes to go in the first half as Doug Strang sets the pass for Penn State. Goes short with it. Pass complete to Dozier coming out of the backfield. He fights up to about the 22, close to the 23. One of the things that's been impressive in the ball game so far, Frank, is the fact that Boston College has held up in the offensive front, leaving Flutie time to look. And when you give Flutie time to look and let him set, well, you see what's happening. Well, it's, it's a choice of two evils, Keith. You defend, he hits you. If you rush, then he really burns you. So that's what a great football player like Flutie can do to any defense. They mark it just over the 20, and Sprang getting pressure. Jumps up in the air, throws it downfield for Bow, and it's off his hands incomplete. So Boston College defensively able to do what they had programmed as well. Get in Sprang's face and hurry him. It was Ruth climbing all over him. Well, Ratajkowski was playing Jackson and man for man. Made a great play. Forcing another punt. Give credit to that defense, Keith. With an old defensive coach. That is just fantastic what they've done to the Penn State offense. BC with nine people up there. Looks like they want to go at him again. Last time they tipped it. Nope, they peel back to uh, block this time. Brennan backs up on it. He could not get to it. Has to let it drop, and it takes the Penn State roll and rolls down to the Boston College 33. Brennan had no chance that time to come up and accept the ball on the return. So it's a 47-yard punt with the roll. Battle of the Network stars coming up on ABC on Thursday night. Howard and all of his pals from Hollywood. 
They do it every year out at Pepperdine, and they just flat have a ball. You'll enjoy it. 9.35 to go in the first half. Boston College going to work, leading 21 to nothing from the 33. They've got Stratford, number 23, in motion. And now, Doug Flutie looking over the Penn State defense, went through a check and then didn't like what he had going, so he spins the first time out of the ball game. 9.32 to play in the first half. See that pretty girl sitting right in the middle there, rubbing her hand? That's Chuck Howard, our producer's daughter, student at Boston College. It's getting cold, and they're talking about the temperature going down low 30s, maybe even a high 20s in some of the hill regions. And this is Bistek trying to break outside on the first down play. And he doesn't get a whole lot out of it. But he is, he's bigger of the fullbacks. He weighs 235 pounds out of Meridian, Connecticut. At Maryland, North Carolina scores now 10-7 Terrapins as Carolina gets on the scoreboard. That game will have a far-reaching impact, as will that one. Look at Auburn. Laying it on Florida, 28-7, the ball game being played at Auburn. And uh, Tron Jackson broke out today and had a big ball game for Georgia's 22nd consecutive victory between the Hedges and Athens. It's second down and eight now from the 35. For Boston College and Flutie straight back and again, no pressure, and he's passed to the sideline. Good to Brennan. And it's good for a first down at midfield. When you play Flutie, you have to decide what are you going to do. Now watch the cushion. This is what's wrong. Fruhan number 93. Watch the cushion he's giving Brennan. You, you, Fruhan's not even in the picture. Look how wide open he is. Gives Brennan a chance to catch the ball, turn downfield, and he comes close to breaking it for longer yardage. He also came close to getting nailed on the face mask. Brennan's caught four now for 65. He's an incredible receiver. He's not all that big, but he's one of the best in BC history. 45! First down snap from midfield. Again, no pressure on Flutie. Can't find anybody to throw to, and that takes off. And Doug is down to about the 41 and unhappy with himself because he lost his footing on the artificial surface here at Sullivan Stadium, and Radisic was able to get a hold of him and ring him down. Penn State's game plan has really backfired. They wanted, they wanted to keep the ball. The they couldn't do it. The Boston College defense has outplayed them. On, in every possession and on the other hand Boston College offense has completely outplayed the Penn State defense you can see the Boston College possessions where they started with it very very impressive for that so far in this first half and you've got 740 to go with the Eagles leading the Lions 21 to nothing Phelan goes in motion Moody getting heat this time, tries to dump it off. It's an incomplete forward pass. He saw big number 70. When Greg Gattuso gets started after you, you, you better find a hole to crawl into because he weighs 260 pounds. And the big guy was loose and coming, and Flutie tries to shovel it ahead to Stratford. It's a tremendous play by Shoot. He's going to get tackled for a loss on second one, and he quickly just throws a ball like a shot put, and it's legal because it was a receiver, an eligible receiver in the area, goes as an incomplete pass. He avoided the loss. That was a critical thing. And some abuse. Third down, a half a yard, over the top. Oh, Steve Strong, the designated short yardage man, as Frank told you, Big Junior out of Burlington, Mass. Boy, he looked good going over the top. In the last two ball games, as Texas pulled it out of victory over Texas Tech, 20 to 3. But Strong, as I want to mention again, high jump 6'7 in high school, weighs 200 pounds, and he is a good short yardage runner. Ball is sitting on the Penn State 38-yard line. First down for Boston College. High remaining in the first half, 7-11. Holy Cross, 70 points against Columbia today. Crusaders are going to play BC here in uh, late November in this very stadium. That's downfield intended for Gieselman. And the pass is incomplete. And we've got a Penn State man shaking up some on the play. It looks like Gattuso is down. Gieselman was down in the seam. He was available. But the pass uh, seemed to float some, and he could not come up with it. Greg getting up now, and he's got a hurt leg. 
Penn State has changed their defensive strategy as we look some more scores. Gattusa was playing a loose nose guard, dropping off and covering. Penn State was rushing only two people in the first quarter, fans. Now they've reverted back to a four-man rush, trying to put some pressure on Flutie and make him throw up faster before the patterns do develop. Long season for the Golden Gophers. Oh, it is. Second down and ten for Boston College. Penn State 38. Ball comes loose, and it is recovered by Penn State. Pursuit from the blind side by Tim Johnson, 55. Flutie trying to option the ball, and had no chance as Johnson wraps him up and knocks the ball loose. Flutie has no idea that number 55 Johnson's right there. He, he just wraps him up high, forcing the ball out, and of course, a great defensive play causes the fumble, and Penn State has a chance. Joe Hines, a senior from Cleveland, Ohio, got it, number 52. And the Lions have the ball first down at their own 39, with 6.52 to go in the first half of play. 21-0, Boston College lead. John Williams, the tailback, goes up into a wing now. And Penn State took too much time, it would appear. Keith, I think the lineman moved after he took his position. Uh, ball foul. Coach McRed. The defense charged sure. across. I didn't see it. They moved and made contact with the offense. That's good for five yards for Penn State against BC. It is the first penalty in the Dead football ball game. Coachman, red. First down. The referee is Raymond Bauer. Umpire Don McDonald. William Cronin, linesman. James Twitty, line judge. George Cullen, field judge. Back judge. James Iguizio. And the clock operator is George Hill. And it's first down and five from the 44 for Penn State. That's Peter Nickel carrying the ball. And Mike Ruth has a hold of him. Mr. Ruth is patrolling the middle today. And Ruth is the leading tackle, good, strong, intense football player. In fact, Jack McNeil told me yesterday he's the most intense player that they've got. But Keith, let me just say, as a coach, it's very critical that Penn State put something on the scoreboard on this possession, or at least before the half. They've got good field position for the first time. Second down, two. Strang gives to John Williams. And he's got his first down. His second effort got him up to the 49. Scott Harrington finally wrestles him down. John Williams. It looks like a first down from this angle. John Williams, number 44, has had a good career at Penn State. This being his senior year, he wanted to come out and have his very best year, but he hurt his knee in a skiing accident this spring and then hurt his other knee after the season started, so he's had a tough time. First down, Penn State. Bowl scouts here. I was visiting prior to the game with folks from the Liberty, the Citrus, and the Hall of Fame. Citrus being what we used to call the Tangerine Bowl. Florida Citrus Commission got involved with it and added some $300,000 to the pot, so they got a pretty good payday coming up down there for their teams this year. From the 49 of Penn State, first down. Strang back. Gets it off over the middle to Kevin Bow. Bow loses his footing at the Boston College 45. Now let's check in with our colleague, Tim Brent. Keith, they're working behind me on Greg Gattuso, Penn State's defensive tackle. You can see that uh, they're taping his foot as we move in a little bit closer. What happened to us? He was stepped on, and he has a severe bruise right on the top of his foot. They are working on it. They have taped it. They're going to put his shoe back on. He's going back into the ballgame. All right, Timmy, thank you. Second down at about four. Ball is just over the 45. First time Penn State's had anything going on the BC side of the field. They reverse it to Kenny Jackson. Jackson gets loose to the sidelines and picks up a Penn State first down. That stops the clock at 5.03 to go in the first half. Kenny Jackson, fast as anybody on the football field. Keith, he's an All-American last year, fans. Consensus All-American number 82. And Joe Paterno says he's finest wide receiver that they've ever had at Penn State. He holds 22 school records, so that's an indication of just how good he is. Ball is sitting at the Boston College 36. The first real threat of any kind by Penn State in the ball game. Boston College showing blitz. Now Diasi winds up again, and he's coming. And he 
got him. Steve Biasi wound up, started too soon trying to anticipate that he had to back up and rewind his motor, and lo and behold, he came a second time and he got the Penn State quarterback. What? Well, just a relentless effort. Number 99, the middle of your screen, he gets blocked, he gets up, and he has the acceleration to come in and stop straying from throwing the ball. He knocks him back and a big, big play, something Boston College desperately needed at this time of the game. Now, number you 99. You saw some strength right there from Doug Strang, though, because he was in a full passing motion and had the strength in his hand to pull that ball back and hold on. And how about the big hand, Keith, Ooh. to grip around the ball to keep it from falling out? From the 46, Strang drops to throw. On second down, he's got to pull it down and uh, run a safer place. And he gets down to about the 42. Good change up in defensive strategy. Pete Carmichael and the defensive staff have done a good job mixing things up. Keeping the Penn State defense offense off balance. That's the key to defense. Surprise on defense is an element of success. Defended with three men rushing and eight dropping back. Covered the receivers. 345 to go in the first half. 21-0 Boston College. Ball is on the BC 42. It is third down for Penn State and about 17. Gives it to Dozier. Up the middle he goes. Breaks loose and it is gone. Touchdown. DJ Dozier. Will go in the books as a 41-yard touchdown skimper. Keep watch the guard. Everybody watch the guard pull. McGinnis is going to trap out. The tackle Heller is pulling around. Excuse me, Short is pulling around. It was a misdirection play, something that you wouldn't think would work against the blitz, but the Penn State line sealed it off, and those are shows why everybody's so excited about his play. The big freshman from Virginia Beach gets Penn State on the scoreboard. Don Chitano in for the extra point try. Pops it up, and it's good. Three minutes and 22 seconds to play in the first half. It is now Boston College 21. The Penn State Lions, seven. That's a big touchdown for Penn State with the clock showing 3.22 to play in the first half. Now 21-7. And uh, let's consider an onside kick. Since they're kicking into the wind, at least a deep onside kick, something to get the ball back is, is wouldn't be too bad a play right now. Greg Montgomery, freshman from Shrewsbury, New Jersey, is the kicker. Still dropped it. Penn State's got it on the Boston College 15. Well, that's more effective than an onside kick, isn't it? Number 35 comes out of there with it for Penn State. Mike Suter. The ball was held up by the wind. Boston College backs couldn't hold it. Ball on it right there. Don't try to pick it up, Bell. Ball on it right there. Instead, it's a big break for Penn State, and we've got a completely different ball game. 15-yard line of Boston College. Lone remaining back is Skeeter Nickel. Williams up in a slot. Bow and Jackson wide. And it's Nickel. And Skeeter can't go very far with it. Finally has his feet locked by Ed Von Nessen as he did quite a bit of searching before he was able to pick up a couple of three yards on the play. Keith, should Penn State score here? You're talking about a turnaround in oh. mental and psychologically. It would really be depressing to the Boston College team who could, in effect, be ahead 28 to nothing right now. That's Joe Paterno, whose teams just play so well. They've won so many times, they believe they can win. They're supposed to win in their mind. Bowman, the tight end, shifting over. Now, Nick, Skeeter Nichols goes up in that direction as well into the wing, leaving Williams back, and Strang rolls it out, gets a heat, pass away, incomplete. The only man that touched the pass was Tony Thurman. The intended receiver looked like it was Kirk Bowman. But the important thing for Boston College there is they did have pressure on the passer. Blitz coming from the right of your screen. 
Thomas, number 46. You can see that the ball is thrown behind Bowman, and it goes right through Thurman's hands, number 17. He should have caught that one. That would have been a big play for him. Turn this momentum right back. Second in time today that Tony's had the ball in his hands and hadn't held on to it. Bring back on third, rolls it out, throws. It is incomplete. Bow. Kevin Bow had it. But released it when he went down with it. The toughest pass to cover on the goal line is a crossing pattern. When you're in man for man, watch Russell, number 45. He's trailing him. You'll see him come in the picture in just a minute. He's trailing him, but once he has acceleration, the ball slow is makes ball slow up, and then Russell knocks the ball out of ball's hands for a fine play. That's as tough a play as you can have for a defensive halfback on the goal line. Nick Gonchitano comes in now. 26-28 yard field goal try for him. At that distance, he's four for four this year. In fact, he's nine for nine for less than 40 yards. Snap is good. Nope. It's picked up by number 10, Tim Parker. And penalty flags all over the place. I, uh, I believe a Boston College man has jumped on it. I think he might very well wind up with the uh, offside against BC. And I think Tim Parker, the holder, saw that. And that's what you got. It's, it's, it's still, it's the down yard to still be fourth and three. Penn State would probably go ahead and get the sure three points. I believe that would be the smart play. Let's see, it's going to be fourth and, be fourth uh, and three. Well, he's putting three it down a, a little more than three. Well, he penalized him six yards. No, he didn't, just no. five. They're going to stay with the field goal. It's a short three. Be sure, fans, one thing. Offsides. Defense. Thou shalt not be fourth offside. Down. Mental, <laughs> fundamental mistake. <laughs> we used to say the kick, four don'ts of the kicking game, don't rough the kicker. But thou shalt not be offside. They want to talk about it. They're not so sure they're going to kick it. With two minute three yard field goal try now for Nick Gunchitano. Out of Tim Parker's hole, Boston College. Offside, five yards, still four from three. So Penn State will go for the three. It's up. And it's good. So two minutes and 14 seconds to play. The fumble by Bell of Boston College on the kickoff return. Penn State recovers it and cash it in for three points in this 21-10 ball game. Once again, Boston College defense, I think, has been the biggest surprise as we see Duke winning their first game of the season over my alma mater, Georgia Tech, is Ben Bennett, who has had a fine career at uh, Duke, 27 out of 33. That's fantastic. 250 yards, 255. There's a running back of the future, too. Uh, big sophomore Keith Byers for Ohio State. 230 pounds he weighs. Plays tailback with good speed. Rush for 174. Two touchdowns. 18-point margin there. That, Wisconsin, yeah. not a bad football team. No, they're team. a good football team, Keith. That's a big win for Earl Bruce and his Buckeyes. World Gymnastics Championships out of Budapest coming up next week. The Dublin Mile and the World Speedway Motorcycle Championship on ABC's Wide World of Sports at 5 Eastern Time next Saturday. Keith, the, the backs for Boston College should not line up on the goal line. Now they're smart. They're back up on the 10-yard line since Penn State is kicking into a strong win. Don't line up where you do ordinarily. Come up close. He kicks it away, and it's a floater. This one is handled by Bell from the four. Ken Bell coming back upfield with a good return out near the 30. Now the question is, does Boston College go conservative? I don't believe that they do. That little flutie has never had a conservative bone in his body. He can throw the football, and they're going to try to get some points on the scoreboard. They still have, what, Keith, two timeouts left? Both teams have two yeah. timeouts remaining. Time is two minutes and eight seconds to go in the first half. Gattuso is not back in the ball game, Keith. I don't believe he is. Nope. Stratt sets up in the tailback position, and Flutie back. Gets it off over the middle to the big tight end, and Gieselman fights his way to the 40. And a first down for Boston College. The tight end is an ideal man to go when you've got a target like Gieselman, six foot five, 200 something pounds. He's big. 235. 235. Yeah. Without a hustle. And his first down, BC on the 40. Yes, Flutie again pops it quick to Brennan. Brennan gets it up to the 48. 
And time remaining, a minute and 48 seconds in running. Takes a good team to run these plays without huddling. It also forces Penn State to play a basic defense. They don't have time to call their defensive signals. Lutie's now got 217 yards in the first half. That's Stratford. Tried to juke a man at the line of scrimmage, sort of lost his balance, and Joe Hines brings him down, but that'll stop the clock now as they move the change for the first down with 131 to play in the first half. Ball is now at the Penn State 47. Lutie's away with it to Brennan. Down at the 32 and another first down. Keith, is he working the clock? I'm telling you. The clock now is 121. The clock stops because of the first down, but they're not huddling. I don't see how he's really calling the plays, Keith, in the fact that he runs one time, he throws one time. He's doing a great job. And he hasn't had a game in two weeks. He's a winner. Going to put it up again on first down. Short with it. Brennan spins away. Good move by Brennan. Gets a block on the corner out of bounds at the 10. Oh, what a great play by Brennan. <laughs> what a sensational move. And backfield coach Tom Coffey told me the excitement begins when this young man gets the ball. He's a sensational runner, and here's a perfect illustration of it. Watch the moves he puts on him right here. Then has the presence of mind to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Picks up a great block from his teammate Phelan and goes out of bounds. Zordich making the play. Keep minute and 10 seconds to go in the first half of play. And this is a stunning execution by Boston College. Give that Doug Flutie credit for being just a sensational player. Here's the blitz, Keith. Passes away into the end zone, incomplete. Pelagato, I think it was, 49 over there? Yes, the tight end. Flutie just scrambles away from the blitz. Here's how cool he is, fans. He's been there so many times. He sees the blitz coming, 17, Hamilton. So he rolls over to the left, throws the ball where the only place it could have been caught, and it goes right through. It looks like the hands may be a, oh, I guess it was low. Yeah, a little bit. Felagata and Brennan both in that area, but it was Felagata who had the best chance to get to it. So it's second down and goal from the 10. They've got Gieselman back in there now. And the blitz is coming. And they've got two timeouts with 104 to play. Play action. Pass in the end zone. That's got to be interference. If they don't call that interference, there's never been one. My Lord, they didn't. That's too bad. Watch it again. Remember, fans, the rule is a defensive man cannot touch the offensive man until uh, the offensive man catches the ball. You can see, goodness gracious, oh, alive. good heavens. That is a. That's that may dreadful. be the worst call I've seen in a year. You got two two officials standing back there looking at it, and they don't call it. I hate hmm. to say what I really believe. I won't say it. But look at that. The rule is he cannot touch the receiver until the ball gets there. That's dreadful. Just dreadful. Third down from the ten. Flutie throws it short, intended for Beestick. And Bob can't catch it. And so Boston College now will see whether or not they'll send out Kevin Snow. There's been some other controversial calls in the Penn State games that uh, have gone in their favor. One in the Alabama game in particular. Well, that's just carelessness there. Two officials, Keith has mentioned, there were two officials standing right there. It wasn't close. They wasn't even close. Mm -hmm. Kevin Snow is in for an extra point try. He's five out of ten for the season. Twenty-six yard kick. Brennan's hold is good. The kick is up by Snow. The kick is good. Fifty-one seconds to go. Boston College comes downfield after Penn State had gone for the ex for the field goal, and they respond with one of their own. So the lead is back to 14 points. Let's look at the interference again, fans. Remember again, the defensive man cannot touch the offensive man until the offensive man has touched the ball. You be the judge. It doesn't take a football official to miss it, to interpret the rule there. That's too bad for Boston College, but a break for Penn State. They only get three points. That's oh, what, what it is, is poor officiating, right? We've got highlights of Florida and Auburn Ready, coming up. Set, 
Scores of other games around the corner. Bino and some highlights from this first half. And it's been pretty much Boston College so far. But there's 30 minutes to go. And that's a resource, resourceful bunch of folks down there wearing white. John Williams, number 44. Kevin Bow, number 11. And Ryan Waldron to kick it off. You think that little Doug Flutie doesn't look confident? <laughs> Number 22, we just had a shot of him, fans. If you ever saw a confident man, I was with him this summer on the uh, promotional tour for a week, enjoyed his company very much. High deep kick for the wind, carrying it back, and Johnny Williams makes the reception in the end zone and will not come back. It'll be Penn State's ball, first down at their 20. So the Lions have 51 seconds to work with. There are the numbers for number 22, Doug Flutie, five foot nine quarterback. He passed for 520 against Penn State last year. He's not far behind it, Keith. Come on, Keith 255. If I yeah, but he was on right the there. short end of the score last year, 52 17. Yeah. From the 20. Give it a Dozier. DJ across the 25 to the 26 before Diossi brings him down. There's a difference with D.J. Dozier gets that football than the other Penn State backs. He looks like he's going to score every time he turns down that field. He's had four rushes for 53 yards so far. Call it a seven-yard pickup, second down and three. And you've got 20 seconds to go in the first half. And they're short of the first down on that carry, and that might do it for the first half of play. Penn State's heading for the locker room. And so they'll just let the clock wear out as the Boston College Golden Eagles lead the Nittany Lions of Penn State 24 to 10 at halftime. And here's Tim Brandt with Coach Jack Bicknell. Jack, you said you wanted to be here first. You are. Flutie yeah. has given him a lot of problems with his mobility. How important, having never beaten Penn State, was that first drive, that first touchdown? Well, the first touchdown was very important, but that last three-point drive was very, very important, too. With two minutes to go, we got to, you can't go into a shell against these guys. We got to stay after them, and if we can stay after them, that's what I want us to do. I saw you upset two times. One, the interference call down here that was not called, and another time when Flutie was hit late. Well, <laughs> I am emotional. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Let me ask you this. You come into the ball game like this, and I talked to David Thomas, your defensive end, yesterday. He says, we've got to get pressure on string. You've gotten it now. Are you going to continue that same game plan, try to come in from the outside and inside on the blitzes? Yes, we are, except I'm concerned of getting the running game going. You know, and the running game is something we want to put pressure on string, and we think we should pressure him. But we got to make sure that when we pressure, like that touchdown run that Dozier ran, that was a blitz after Strang and didn't give it to Strang. So that's a problem. All right, good luck. This All right, thank you. Okay, Jack Bicknell with our score, 24 to 10. Boston College on top. We'll be back. After what this word, like? our commercial message and a word from your local stations. By what? Penn State last week defeated West Virginia. West Virginia defeated Boston College, and now Boston College has been dominant in this first half against the Nittany Lions. Penn State will have the football in the first possession, and Doug Flutie has been a big, big story of this first half of the ball game. Doug Flutie and his impressive, impressive passing numbers. As we look at the stats, how dominant can one team be? Penn, uh, Penn State was not able to move the ball offensively. Look at Boston College, 345 yards. Notice that to 96. Boston College had three turnovers. Penn State had none. A lot of times, fans, we have a complete turnaround in the second half, and that's what Boston College is going to try to prevent, and Penn State is going to try to accomplish. John Williams, 44, Kevin Bow, number 11, are the deep people to receive the kickoff for the Lions. And Walden will kick it off for Boston College. With the win beyond the end zone, it'll be first down for Penn State at the 20. The defensive unit BC sends out David Thomas, defensive end 230, Scott Harrington 255 at tackle, Mike Ruth the nose guard at 255 and a big first half for him, Rob Swanky 255 at tackle, and Steve Lubisher 220 pounds at defensive end. Steve Diossi is a linebacker at 250, and Ed Von Nessen at 230, the other linebacker. 
And here's the first snap of the second half for Penn State. Strang comes out at quarterback. Mumford the lone remaining back, and John Williams is up there in the slot. And they give it to Mumford. And Mumford pops it around the end and comes across the 30 after the 31 and picks up a first down where Harrington brings him down with help from Thurman. These are the people that play the secondary for Boston College. George Ratajkowski, 5'10", 190. Todd Russell, 6'1", 180. David Pereira is the 5'10", 205. And Tony Thurman, 6 feet, 175. First down Lions at their own 31 as you see their offensive unit. Just starting the third quarter of play. Strang gives the ball. And Williams breaks it and drops the football. And Penn State gets it back. There was a white shirt, saw that ball come loose and curl back to cover it for them. And I'll tell you who it is as soon as I uh, can see his number. Kevin Bow makes the uh, recovery for Penn State. It appears that Penn State is going to run the ball going against the wind. I think that's good strategy. Plenty of time to get touchdowns. John Williams well for the first time in, in uh, most of this season. The ball is stripped out. Kevin Ball, number 11, the wide receiver, comes sprinting inside with his quickness, makes the recovery. Dozier comes in now, replacing Williams at tailback for Penn State. Second down, one. All right, yeah. Dozier having scored Penn State's only touchdown on a 41-yard shot up the middle. Dozier's got it. And he's got the first down. Good line surge, Keith, by the Penn State offense. They made up their line. They're going to run at Penn, uh, Boston College, I would guess, and uh, establish some run before they start getting fancy, particularly since they're going into a, a stiff breeze. Dozier comes out. He had some trouble with a pinched nerve in the ball game against West Virginia. Didn't play much. Had one big play in that ball game, and he's not playing a whole lot today. So that neck may still be bothering him some. Spraying back to throw it, gets it off quickly, and the pass is good to Jackson. Kenny Jackson, the flanker, curling inside with it, makes the catch at the Boston College 43 first down Penn State. Most teams have been double covering Kenny Jackson. He's only caught 15, as you can see, for the season. That's way below what he's accustomed to, to catching. The, but the defense are trying to take him out of the ball game, which has opened up Kevin Ball for a much better uh, reception. That's uh, Kenny's first catch of the day. So Penn State coming out of the box in full charge. They stick it in the end zone. We got a ball game. Give it to John Williams cutting back against the grain on a misdirection. He's down to the 40. Picked up about three. Second down and seven coming up. The Boston College defense continues to get some penetration against the Penn State offensive line. This time, that they, this seems like this series, they've been playing very conservative, though, with not blitzing the linebackers. Now they come in with a blitz. They got him. He got the ball away. Dave Pereira, the strong safety number 41, came firing through the crease, and he hit Doug Strang just as Doug released the ball, and the pass fell incomplete. Right up the middle, number 41, to the left of your screen. Hayden, the center, has to block the nose man, Ruth, and you can see that Pereira is free, but uh, Strang has the ability to get rid of the ball. He knew this, the blitz was coming. The screen was set up, but he goes incomplete, making third down. He's 6'1", 201. He's strong. Third down and seven, just over to BC 40. Let's on again. Runs away from it, gets the pass off to the sidelines, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Kenny Jackson, he had double coverage. Ratajkowski in the main was the man that knocked the ball away. So that'll bring up a fourth down for Penn State. Once again, the blitz being the deciding factor, forcing Penn State into a potential kicking situation. Kenny Jackson dragging a leg as he comes off the field as if he is hurt. Keith, the temperature has dropped considerably. Yes, it has. Tony Thurman is the deep man as George Reynolds is out the punt. Hits it very high in the air. The wind's going to blow it straight down, and Thurman calls for a fair catch for Boston College at the BC 12. Penn State's defensive unit, Bob White, defensive end, 225 pounds. Scott Carraher at tackle 240. 
Greg Gattuso, big fella at 260, and Steve Sefter, 230 pounds. Linebackers, Rogers Alexander, 6'2", 195. Uh, Scott Radisick, 6'3", 235. And Carmen Masiantonio, 6'2", 220. So Flutie sets him up now at the 12. Sends Stratford in motion, turns around, gives the ball off. Nope, kept it himself. Flutie kept it. Handled it. I thought for a moment he'd given that ball off to the inside man, but he pulled it down and kept it and picked second up about six, seven yards. Sittner, the cornerback, big size for the secondary, six feet, 195. Fruhan, 6'2", 195, playing really out of position. Harry Hamilton, 5'11", 190. And Mike Zordich, 5'11", 200. It's a young secondary. They miss Mark Robinson, an All-American. The offensive unit reflected there for Boston College. Second down. I don't mark Flutie too much. They only gave him four yards on that carry. So it's second down and about six. He's back to throw it. Swings it out. Intended for Stratford. Troy Stratford was standing there looking at Flutie. Had not made his move up the field. And uh, Flutie led him a little too much. What happened to uh, Stratford was reading the blitz. And he just pulled out for the little... Uh, dump pass hoping to catch it and run with it but he failed to keep his eye on it he looked downfield first Marvin McKenzie was in for one play he's out now and Brian Brennan comes back in it is third down and six for Boston College Gieselman the tight end sets up at the bottom of the picture number 83 and the flutie back goes down the middle with it and it is incomplete. I don't really know who he intended to throw it to. He didn't get it really close to anybody. Phelan uh, was the intermediate man, and Brennan was the deep man, and the pass goes incomplete. So with the wind at his back now, John Mahalik will come in to do the punting. His first kick today into the wind was 19. 19 yards. His seasonal average, fans, is 38 yards. He gets it out of there and gets a pretty good kick out of it. The 34 comes back to the 39. 50-yard punt by Mahalik. Time remaining third quarter, 11 minutes and 29 seconds. And Boston College leading Penn State 24 to 10. Penn State's football at the 30s, just outside the 37. And Doug Strang, four for 16 in the ball game for 41 yards. He was able to find Kenny Jackson in that last possession. So let's see if Jackson remains available to him. He hands the ball off to D.J. Dozier. He pops it to the outside. Frank's right. Every time he gets that football in his hands, you just sort of hold your breath. Nebraska scored 51 points today in beating Kansas State. And Mike Rozier for 227 yards and three touchdowns. Texas won their ball game. Number two ranked Longhorns. But it didn't, wasn't easy. North Carolina has now gone ahead of Maryland by a 17 to 10 score. And Auburn defeated Florida 28 to 21. That's Florida's first loss. Georgia was a winner today as well. Strength pass very quickly on target to the tight end. Dean DiMidio out of Westchester, PA. And they won't, the spot won't give him his first down. He's just short of it. That's the first time that we've seen Strang really react quickly to the blitz. The tight end is open. He stops short, just a three-step drop, lays the ball out for uh, Domitio, the tight end, who is open. Thurman's right on top of him, preventing the first down. Third down and a yard, and it's a long yard. Mumford dives and uh, he's got it. Tony going over the right side. Tony Mumford was a tailback uh, first two years at uh, Penn State. Good team man. Agrees to, agree to move the fullback and uh, help the team. Big ball game. Miami the Hurricane leading West Virginia 10-3. And uh, Illinois defeated Michigan today by 10, which gives the Illini a pretty good run at the Rose Bowl. Strang wants to go deep, and he runs out of time. Mike Ruth looped around and got him. That's the third sack of the Penn State quarterback today. 
This Mike Roos, fifth sack for the season, number 68. Hayden is blocking on him, uses his hands momentarily, then Moe, 63, has him with his hands uh, in that position on a retreat block, which is legal. Ruth makes a fine play, spins around off of the block. The Radikowski had to receive a cover. The sack takes place. Loss of about six yards. They'll make it second down at about 16, back near the 43 of Penn State. Here comes Dozier up the middle. And he's brought down at the 40, and Tony Thurman saved a possible this, touchdown. This is exactly the same play that uh, Dozier scored on. Ruth is a nose guard. There's a misdirection, and you can watch him block down and really move him to the inside. Moles, number 63, Hayden, in the center. Beautiful blocking as McGinnis pulls around, blocks the end out, number 46, Thomas Shaw, I mean, and then the tackle comes through short, and there's the big hole. Good run by Dozier. And it's a first down for the Nittany Lions at the Boston College 39. As Crane goes back to throw, goes deep for Jackson. No good, too high. Once again, the pressure is on Strang, the quarterback. Man for man coverage, coverage in the secondary, and Jackson was open momentarily, but he couldn't get the ball. Let's just see how much pressure uh, Ruth, number 68, and his teammates can put on Strang as Ruth continues to push Hayden, the center, back right into the face of the quarterback, forcing of Eric throw. Good play by Ruth, having a sensational game. Second down and ten for the Lions. John Williams back in now and Strang back. Skeeter Nichol can't hold the block. He slides off the block and catches the pass. And Skeeter Nichol runs it down to about the 33. Good call by the Penn State staff. First screen pass they've thrown of the ball game and it uh, caught the uh, Boston College uh, off balance and a nice game resulted. Strang's looking to the Strang is looking to the sideline to get his call from the Penn State coaches. With the call comes D.J. Dozier. Third down and a short three. The ball sitting at the 32 of Boston College. Eagles leading 24 to 10. We're in the third quarter of play. They flip it out to Dozier over the shoulder catch and he is caught and pulled down from behind for a loss by Steve Diossi. The linebacker Diossi is picking up the back man for man out of the backfield. You're talking about a mismatch but a great play. Diossi weighs 244. He's playing Dozier man for man. Now the question is can he get him down on the open field? Look at him accelerate and he grabs him around the hips and pulls him down forcing the parent punt. Seventh part of the ball game coming up for George Reynolds in Penn State. George gets it way up in the air and it'll carry into the end zone. So Boston College will have the football first down at its own 20. 7-12 to play in the third quarter and the Eagles lead the Lions by 14. It's coming up now with a 14-point lead. They haven't done much in the second half as yet. Gieselman's back in there at tight end. And Doug Flutie quickly to the air throws for Brian Brennan and threw the ball behind him incomplete he had Brennan out there where a linebacker Oscar Antonio had to cover him but there was pressure coming from Sefter on Flutie so he released it quickly Penn State is using situation substitutions for the first time this year five defensive players coming into the ball game expecting a pass the men that play the run left the game well, you can see that the pressure now is starting to pay off for them as Flutie's missed six in a row. Now they drop off into a four-man front. Linebackers going to the outside for cover. And Flutie hands it up the middle. It goes to Bistek, the fullback, and he blows through the middle for a first down out to about the 33. The offensive line, Jack Bignell's son, made an excellent block because it was a trap play right up the middle. The center is uncovered. He's going to block back over to the left and the guard pulls and traps out and uh, you see Batiste breaking in the secondary Zordich number 43 brings him down after the first down. Call it the 32 and a first down for the Eagles. Phelan goes in motion. Flutie back. Pass to the sidelines incomplete. 
His passes in this third quarter do not appear to have very good rotation. They're sort of floating out there. It, Keith, that one elevated. It rose with the wind. You can see the Jack McNeil giving the signal, but when the wind is behind you, sometimes the ball, as Keith mentioned, it's not a tight spiral. It elevates, and that's what happened on the last. Hey, we got, we got it. Oh, they, Boston College needs a first down, and Penn State needs to stop them right here. It's a critical down, third and second down. They're showing blitz. They are blitzing. And the pass is away, and over the middle, the pass is incomplete. Intended for Pelagata, the tight end, slanting across. Coverage by Zordich of Penn State, 43. So it is third down and 10. Penn State still has in the ball game the basic uh, pass rushes and defenders. Now comes the big men coming back, Katusa, Septa, and the starting lineup. And Flutie has now missed eight in a row. He was pure magic in the first half, but nothing so far in the second half. Third and ten. Well, he threw that one into a crowd trying to get it to Stratford and Penn State. Holds him, so fourth and ten. In comes the kicking unit. Fine defensive play by Alexander, the outside linebacker, dropping back and breaking on the ball and making the foot pass incomplete. Mahalik's third punt of the game. The previous two were 19 and 50. This is a dandy. It runs Bow all the way back to his 12. He's got a wall. Got some help, but he loses his footing on the cut at the 20. A 57-yard punt by Mahalik, tackled by Kristofowski. And you've got six minutes and 18 seconds to play in the third quarter. We're getting the win now. Next week, Florida plays Georgia in Jacksonville, and then the following week, Auburn plays at Georgia. First down, Penn State at the 20, and the D.C. crowd coming up in support of their team, making it difficult for Strang, I'm sure, and his people to hear on the field. Gives the ball to Mumford, and Tony gets a couple of yards. There we see the time left in the third quarter. Penn State wants to get something on the scoreboard while they're going in to win, and you would see that the... the Comparisons of the first half, very interesting what's happened the first half and the second half. Penn State has made some good corrections at halftime. We'll talk about those in a minute. Flutie's 0 for 8 in passing in the second half. Here's the ball in the air by Strang. It's complete to Kenny Jackson across the 40 to the 41. And a Penn State first down. Boy, Strang shows a lot of patience. He gets good protection. This is a difference in the Strang in the first two ball games. And now, in particular in this half, he waits till Jackson breaks inside. The Aussie slips down. The completion to Jackson. Watch Jackson turn inside. This is what he does so effectively. He has such a push off the ball that the defense think deep. And now he comes inside wide open. 41, first down. Ball goes to Dozier, and Dozier slams it over the right side and picks up close to seven yards. From this point, as we look at Joe Paterno, we, it appears that the Boston College defense cannot stop the Penn State offense without going to the extreme gambling. When they play straight, uh, Penn State picks up yardage, and uh, when they gamble, it's really a risk thing to do, but they've had success with it. They'll have to stay with it. They're chewing up the third quarter going into the win, too. That's what Penn State wants to do. Come in the fourth quarter with the win with a chance to win. <laughs> On second down and three, somebody broke the count. Well, what? There's Ron Heller, number 78, the stabilizing factor of this Penn State offensive team. Had a fine career, was a tight end. Big, strong football player, tight end when he first came to Penn State. Been an offensive tackle in recent years. Dead ball foul. False start. Offense. There we see the Notre Dame final, beating Navy and, and Allen Pinkett, the fine game that he had, and also McCollum, the outstanding Navy back, rushed for only 92 yards. That's the first flag in the ball game on Penn State. 
Second down now. A little over eight yards. They give the ball to Dozier trying to get to the outside. And they won't let him go. So they pull him down. And right now we check in with Jim Lampley. In College Park, Maryland, the nation's number three team, North Carolina, is trailing once again. First drive of the second half. Maryland got the touchdown on this 14-yard Isaias and Derek Bedanyak pass and run. Nice little move by Bedanyak to get into the end zone. Then the surprise. They take the kick, and Isaias and threw in the back of the end zone to Chris Knight. On the strength of that two-pointer, Maryland now leads the Tar Heels 18-17. Back to Keith Jackson. That's a pretty good ruckus going on. Here's Spring trying to roll away from the pressure and get the pass to the sideline. And he can't complete it. He got the ball away, and he was fortunate to do that. So it brings up fourth down. Just an extra effort by the fine Boston College defense to put pressure on Doug Strand. He's at the mercy of his offensive lineman as a passer. They've got to do the job for him. It is the eighth punt of the ball game for Penn State coming up. George Reynolds has been very busy. A good high hanging kick into the wind. And Thurman's forced to a fair catch call. No, it's Brian Brennan. Brennan making the fair catch call back or pad in this football game. Ball is on the 11. Flutie pitches back. Stratford getting to the outside. Pretty good effort. Got it up to the 19 yard line. Gieselman and McDonald did a great job of blocking on their side of the line opening up the hole but keep there are two reasons why I think that uh, Flute is having trouble this first half they're both Penn State one Penn State's getting a better rush Two, the field position has been so poor that uh, Flute has been very careful with his passes all at the 19 make it second down two with the ball to the outside and go, should have a first go, down. He was popped out right around the 21, just over the 21 as Rogers Alexander from Riverdale, Maryland stepped in there. Your crowd is 56,188 at Sullivan Stadium. That's Doug Flutie in the first half, 15 for 26, 255, zero for six in the second half. Penn State doing a much better job applying enough pressure to make Flutie, be careful with his passes. Change across, may not have it, doesn't. Just an inch or two, Keith, looks like two inches. Be interested in what Penn State does with their defense. I would think they would commit just thinking they've got to commit everybody to the run and hope that Flutie doesn't try a surprise play. See the referee. He hadn't put it marked his shoe so that he could get a precise mark by placing his heel. <laughs> now he's messed up completely. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to guess where it is now because he lost his place. It wasn't much difference there, about an inch or two, so he could put it back. Flutie now has gone 0 for 9. He missed the last three passes of the first half and the first six of this half. Strahan is in. The short yardage man. Full house backfield. Full house team. Now they break it up. Putting Strahan at the eye back position. And give it to him. Oh, don't know. Didn't make it, Keith. Radisek met him right at the top of the stack. They gave him a pretty good spot. It's going to be very close again. Yeah, they gave it to him, Keith. A good spot for Boston College, that is. We, I was calling him Strong. Uh, I can name five other people who, name, <laughs> who spell their name the same way and pronounce it Strong, but he, in his case, he calls it Strahan. Ball is up around the 22. And it's first down for Boston College. Time now, 2.35, third quarter. Action to Stratford, pass to the sidelines. Gieselman, Gieselman gets close to the 30. Pick up of about eight yards on the play. When you get in trouble, Flutie goes to the tight end. Best receiver target they've got at 6-5. Joe Theismann and Ed Luther will be the quarterbacks in that one next Monday night here on ABC. 
Dan Fouts is still grounded with a rotator cuff injury that caused some swelling in his shoulder and just simply is going to sit there until it's well. There's no reason to force one of those kind of injuries. You can't. Second down and about two. Rudy gives it to Troy Stratford, going for the outside, going for the marker. He's close to his marker, but this time I don't think his spot is good enough upfield to get him this first down. Radisek now becoming a dominant factor in the Penn State defense. Radisek was second team All-American last year. He stands 6'3", weighs 240. What a fine linebacker he is, and he runs very well, very mobile to the extreme, in fact, for a big man. Made an outstanding play on Stratford. You see Flutie's over there trying to get some ideas as to exactly how much he's going to need on third down. It looks like it's about a half a yard. And in comes uh, that short yardage group again, which means uh, Steve Strahan coming in. Keith, it was very close last time. Be interesting to see if, in fact, Boston College goes to something special against the goal line of short yardage defense. They also send a second tight end, Brendan Murphy, into the ball game. They'll go the same way. Oh, Flutie keeps it and throws it to Brennan down the middle. And it's a first down at the 45. That type of play wins championships for you. You've got to have great confidence in your quarterback. Flutie is just going to bootleg the ball back as Strahan goes over the top. Brennan is being covered man for man. You can see how wide open he is. Sitter did not have a chance to make the play. Watch Brennan. Very cagey. He's just going to get open and Keith, I'm going to use it again. Just chokes his motor right in there and <laughs> catches the ball. First down at the Penn State 45. Flutie back. Throws it short. That's about three times today now that Troy Stratford has not held on to it. Trying to set up a little screen action out there, and first thing you got to do is catch it. Here's the versatility of uh, the receiver showing a good pass attack. Brennan having a sensational game. Eight passes for 135 yards. It'll be second down and 10 for Boston College at the Penn State 45. is incomplete down the middle. Brennan was the man trying to break and he could not get clear of Sidner. And the ball sails over his head incomplete. Some Ex pressure coming up the middle that time too from Penn State. Uh, Joe Hines was pounding up the middle. Also the linebackers had what we call a delayed blitz. They show dropping back and the linemen make their blocks and then the blitz comes late and that was the key to making the Flutie throw the ball badly. Time remaining, third quarter, 45 seconds. So we've had no scoring. Flute is not going to get the ball off without calling a timeout. Only six seconds left on the clock, on the 25-second uh, clock. So he spends a timeout, leaving Boston College with two, and goes to the sidelines to visit. As we watch Jack McNeil talking to the quarterback, Here's the numbers. Iowa coming back from the loss last week. Chuck Long, 16 out of 25. 233 yards. Fine, fine football team, Iowa. I was impressed with them last week. Oklahoma blows Kansas away. You see the Spencer Tillman and Earl Johnson sharing the tailback job at Oklahoma now. And between them, produced 214 yards. Alabama. Pulled away late in the ball game to beat Mississippi State by 17. Alabama coming off two successive losses. And there are your Ivy League scores. Yale had a lead on Dartmouth for a time, but Dartmouth came back to win it. And Penn edged Princeton by one. Harvard beat Brown by seven. And Holy Cross rolls along, scoring 77 points today. Crusaders headed for a matchup with Boston College next month. Back goes Flutie. On third down and 10 goes down the middle. Brennan! 25-yard line, 23-yard line, first down Boston College. Just a sensational catch, fans. You've got to see this one again. The ball is thrown high. 
remember when the ball is thrown high, the receiver leaves himself very vulnerable to get hit by the defense. Watch the concentration. He leaps, stretches to his very apex of his height, pulls it in, cradles it, expects to get hit, but holds on to the ball. He's caught nine for 157 yards today. Call it the 24 of Penn State and a first down for Boston College. Flutie to Stratford around the corner. Dukes one from out at the 15. Once again, the value of Troy Stratford at tailback making that yard is going outside showing the speed that it requires to get outside the Penn State defense as we look at Brian Brennan nine receptions what a day he's had not any not many have been easy either Keith it's all been pretty tough right. all coming back upfield the definition of the penalty. Illegal motion. Offense. First down. Keith, I didn't see the play at all. The flag even. First down and 15 as the ball <laughs> comes back to the 28 of Penn State. Flutie back. Quickly away with it. Gieselman can't get it. Again, Penn State was putting pressure on him coming up the middle. Manoa, number 39, was unblocked, and Flutie was very lucky to get the ball away without uh, taking the loss. The Penn State defense are playing much better this half, and I think primarily because of the rush. They're applying good pressure on virtually every pass that uh, Flutie has attempted. is now 18 out of 37 for 305 yards. Second down, 15. Pass thrown short to Brennan. Brennan's to the 20. And just over the 20. So the third quarter, we've got 15 minutes to go. It's a 24-10 Boston College lead. Back after this commercial. Leading. No scoring in the third quarter. And it's third down. And a long six, a short seven to keep the ball here. Flutie back. Pressure on. Runs it up the middle. Fumbles the football. Penalty flag is thrown. Penn State's got the football, but let's see about the flag. Linesman threw it. Penn State's going ahead changing team, so it looks like it's against Boston College. On the offense, decline, wait, he recovered the fumble, first down. At the 19, so Penn State gets the ball, first down at the 19. You can see that uh, I believe the young man working on Gattusa was one holding, but Flutie has the ball knocking, knocked out of his hands because the rush came clean and uh, Flutie was not expecting and didn't get rid of the ball fast. Fourth Boston College turnover. Dozier misdirection trying to go around the left side. Stumbling much of the way still turns in about a four and a half yard pickup. Tackled by Gerecki. Now Penn State has the win. They've not been successful with their running game as we look at the stats. They picked up a little bit in the third quarter. Still, still dominant by its numbers by Boston College. Now the turnovers are four for Boston College, and that's been some factor in this ball game. Second down, five and a half. Strang gives to Dozier. Around the corner, picks up a first down. So it looks like the big freshman from Virginia Beach is going to hear his number called some here. There's a penalty flag on the field. And the third quarter, Maryland leading North Carolina by a score of 21-17, adding a field goal. Here's a holding call. This is against Penn State. Well, that's the kind of break that Boston College needed. 
Jackson is talking to the officials trying to find out who it was on. Players have that right. Here are the turnovers. You can see that Penn State has not lost the ball by a turnover. Boston College has lost four. Taking them out of two scoring opportunities. Holding 10 yards. Offense. Second down. So that wipes out the first down run by Dozier. And it puts Penn State back on the 20. We're at second down and 10. Sprang the throw. No pressure this time. His pass goes over the middle. And it's in and out of the hands of Kevin Bow. And little Kevin just holds on to his head because he was wide open. Right now, Jim Lampley. Big trouble for North Carolina now. End of the third quarter in College Park. There was a Maryland field goal that made it 21-17. Mark Smith fumbled away the kickoff for Carolina without being hit. Jess Atkinson, the kicker, recovered it. And two plays later, Esiason hit Sean Sullivan from 24 yards out. Now it is 28-17 Maryland with time running out for the Tar Heel. Keith? Hey, Jimmy. Well, they'll have a party at College Park tonight. Pressure on, sprang his back, pass away, caught by ball. Kevin Bow up a mile high in the air, pulled it down. So Strang never saw it because Doug was on his back. Great effort by both Strang and Bow, number 11, who's coming across the middle. The rush is on, accompanied by man for man. You can see Bow go up, and uh, where he comes down was a little bit short of the first down it now appears. No, I guess the spot uh, he gave him a. The forward progress made it a first down. Yep. And that's a good call. The forward progress is the most advanced point of the ball by the runner. Big play for Penn State. They've got four more snaps with it now. The ball is sitting very close to the 30. You've got 13 minutes and 45 seconds to play in the game. And Boston College leading 24 to 10. Playing back. Got in this time. From the top of the picture, the blitz by Chuck Garecki, defensive end. That is the fourth sack in the ball game by Boston College. Number 95, Gorecki is coming from the back, unblocked. You can see Mole, the Moles number 63 was assigned to him, but got there late. The sack took place and forces Penn State into a hole. The loss from the 30 back near the 20. You're looking at about second down and close to 20. And a penalty. Must have had some offensive line movement because you've still got a little time left on the clock. Penn State's success throwing the ball has been in the middle, deep in behind the linebackers on zone coverage and also on man-to-man -man coverage those inside routes are the toughest to defend Dead ball false start offense that Boy, could be a rose bowl game out there on the west coast 24-20 uh, washington leading ucla be very interesting to see if boston college puts on the blitz well a second down and 25 and the pass up field again it's kevin bow making the catch at the 35, and he is busy. Strang put it right on the money, and Kevin went up to get it five yards short of the first down. Strang is going to have good protection. Defend only two men rushing. Gives him plenty of time to spot Bow, break it across the middle, which has been open virtually all night long, and gets him right on the numbers, and Bow makes the catch. Just an inside route, turning in behind the linebackers, and he concentrates on the ball and cradles it in. Notice that he's gone to gloves with it getting cold now. Pass to the sidelines. Again, bow. This time it is good. Up near the 44, and it's a first down for Penn State. Oh, that's a big first down, making up two penalties. A 10-yard penalty for holding, a 5-yard penalty for offensive encroachment. Two good throws by Strang, having the poise, the patience to wait and hit his receivers with accurate throws. 12 minutes and 8 seconds to play in the football game. 14-point Boston College lead. No scoring in the second half as yet. Boston College jumped out to a 21-0 lead. No 
Hoosier on first down. Hit after a yard. Number 57 came ripping across to hit him hard. Ted Gaffney with help from Rob Swinky. Gaffney, number 57, is a sophomore. Coaches say he's going to be a very good linebacker, but he diagnosed that play immediately and attacked the ball carry for an outstanding defensive play. Second down, nine coming up. Penn State has got to go to the air. Middle's been available much of the night. Playing back. Throws it short to Bow, and Bow is caught and walked down. And they'll mark him down at the 44, and it'll be a loss of a yard. And the man who made the play is Dave Pereira, number 41. Fine defensive play by the, the Boston College defense. Had a pretty good rush and defended well, conceded the short pass, and made the tackle immediately after the catch. back on third down 11 down the middle did he catch up yes ball? he did my Sensation. goodness bow makes another reception under heavy pressure at the 39 and another Penn State first down once again breaking in the middle the safety man Thurman is playing very deep doesn't want to give up the easy one you can see Gaffney covering him uh, bow man for man couldn't quite get there but Luckily, Penn State, uh, excuse me, Boston College made the tackle after the catch. Spring is now hit five in a row. Warming up. He looks good, showing good patience. Bows out for a rest. He's got it coming. Robinson in to replace him. Strang has time to pump it once, and then he is caught and pulled down. He picked up a yard or so as he tried to break it out and run upfield as the linebackers had dropped off to give him a lot of room. There's the time remaining in the football game. My old coach Bobby Dodd at Georgia Tech used to say the first thing you teach a quarterback is when not to throw the ball. That was a perfect illustration of a good decision by Strang. His receivers were covered, so he scrambled back up for a short game. Game two, second down, eight. That's Dozier. And DJ dances up to the 33. When the Penn State gets you in their sights, they can move you. Let's watch Ruth, who's a fine football player, slanting to one side. McGinnis, number 54, the old hometown boy from College Park, blocks him all the way over the side, opening up a nice hole for Dozier, number 42, comes in and picks up some yardage. You know, he hasn't played much in this ball game, Frank, but he's, he's had 14 carries. He's got 106 yards. He looks great. He looks outstanding for a freshman. Third down and three. Dozier caught by one man, shakes him off, and picks up a first down for Penn State near the Boston College 27. That's the difference in making a first down with a great football player or having to punt the ball. Dozier was hit in the backfield all the way for a loss and would not go down. Watch it, fans. To the bottom of your screen, the blitz is on right where Dozier's running, and uh, the, o the Aussie has him just for a moment, but then Dozier turns it on, splits two blockers, tacklers, and makes the first down. Very impressive run. Ball is sitting on the Boston College 27. Kevin Bow is back in. John Williams is back in, and Penn State spends a timeout. So the Nittany Lions call time. And time, eight minutes and 48 seconds to play in the game. Test pilot Chuck Yates. Ball game is taking place at Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough with a crowd of 56,188 people on hand to watch it. The last time Boston College played here was against Notre Dame back in 1975. They have two other games, uh, Holy Cross and... Uh, Alabama scheduled here at Sullivan Stadium this season. First down for Penn State at the BC 27 and straying back. Going for Jackson in the end zone. Incomplete. Good coverage by George Ratajkowski. Let's watch the coverage again. Man, the toughest uh, fans, the toughest thing in the world is to cover a player like Jackson. Blazing speed. He's going right down the sideline. He wants to out jump Radikowski. Kowski, number 15, to watch the ball a little bit high. Neither one of them can really get his overthrown just a little bit. Goes incomplete. Fine defensive play and yet a good effort by Jackson. Second down and 10. 
has Tim Robinson in motion. Number 87. Sprang back. Gives the ball to John Williams. Good blocking left side. And John is across the 20. He picked up at least seven on that carry. And checking the clock. Eight and a half minutes to play in the football game. Boston College leading by 14 points. And each team with two timeouts remaining. Let's go ahead to the strategy. So Penn State score. I think it's best, and I think most coaches would agree to go for two. Penn State wants to win. I think they could go for two the first time uh, they score. They're trailing by 14 points, not wait till the second time. Give them two chances to win or tie. Third down at about two and a half yards. And it's Williams. He doesn't make it. Number 93. Steve Lubisher and 52, Scott Harrington. Two, Big defensive play. Yeah, two seniors on the left side of the line coming through and penetrating. But Paterno's got to go for it. Fourth and two, he's got no chance. No choice but to go for it. That's more than two, Frank. That's a good two and a half. Four pit. They got to go just about halfway between the 18 and 17 to get that first down. It needs to be a a touchdown or a loss because I believe you can expect a full all-out seven-man blitz. Strang spends a timeout. It wasn't what they had in mind. And he looked up at the 25-second clock, only three seconds remaining, and it's one time seconds to play in the game. Fourth down. Strang back. Throws it wide open to the tight end. Cyberling. Touchdown, Penn State. Like I said, it would either be a touchdown or a loss. Boston College was coming with everybody but the kitchen sink. Crossing in is the toughest thing to cover in that situation. Tight end, Cyberling getting his first look at the ball today. Big freshman from Erie, PA. Takes it in for the score, and they're going for one. Don Chitano will kick for the point out of Parker's hole. Unless Parker picks it up and does something else with it. Nope, going to kick it. And he made it. And so with seven minutes and 13 seconds to play in this football game, it gets pretty tight. 24 to 17. Let's look at the touchdown again, fans. You're going to see the tight end up to the top of your screen is going to cross. The one at the bottom is going to cross. Nobody really picked up either one of them. They were, all the receivers were wide open. But as you can see, Sidon is so open that he can take the ball and run for the touchdown. Let's watch it from the end zone. The linebackers take the fake. You can see both Gaffney and Diossi are playing the fake of the backs. No one is covering Sidon. He's open. Number 91, wide open, and goes in for the touchdown. A beautiful call. Excellent execution by the Penn State offense. So the Lions shut them down. Boston College down in the second half of play, and they've come up with the only touchdown of the second half, and the 7-13 to play. It's a 24-17 ball game, and coming up next Thursday night, the Battle of the Network stars from ABC, NBC, and CBS. The team captains are Bill Shatner, T.J. Hooker, you know him, William Shatner. Mr. T captains uh, the NBC team, and William Devane captains the CBS team. It'll be fun. High hanger picked up by Tyrone Taylor, and Taylor comes back to about the 17-18. A big scramble on, but apparently no fumble. Shane Conlon downfield to make the tackle for Penn State. Well, both the Penn State and the Penn State offense, offense and defense have played quite well. There's a 17-play drive, and I think the key was really the poise, confidence, and patience of Strang as he stayed in the pocket and hit key third-down passes. Yeah, but Kevin Bow made some yeah. catches, Frank, yes, in that possession that were a sight to see. Yes, they were. It's up to Doug Flutie now to pick up some yardage. Keep the Penn State offense off the field. And Flutie, play action. Throws a looper downfield that is caught. Phelan with a marvelous catch. 
The ball is being thrown into the wind, fans, and it hangs up. The ball is not well thrown, although it's right on the target. You can see Flutie throw it up high. It hangs into the wind long enough for Phelan to come down with it. Watch Phelan leave his feet, and he catches the ball. Just a sensational play over the shoulder, most difficult to catch. Look at the tail end of it one more time, real quickly. Watch him zero in on the ball and cradle it in. Perfect, perfect execution. First down at the 47, uh, Flutie ducks away from one pursuer and hook slides down around the 48 of Penn State. That's about a five yard pick up there. In comes the situation substitutes for Penn State. Out goes the ones that play against the run. In comes the four substitutes that play against the pass. They've been very, very effective against Flutie this second half. Six minutes and ten seconds to play in the football game. Second down at about five. Flutie looking to throw. Gets it away, and it's good. The pass is caught down around the 38 of Penn State, and that will be a first down. And guess who? Brian Brennan, who has indeed been a star in this football game. Fans, the toughest thing in the world is throw a pass that hard, roll into the left. Watch Flutie. He's not slowing down. He's sprinting away from the pur pursuit. He turns and throws a ball sidearm, which what you, the way you throw it, roll into the left, right on the numbers to Brennan. Watch Brennan work himself open, get himself uncovered, come back to the ball, cradle it, and get the first down. He's caught 11 for 176 yards. That's a career for some. Penn State 38, first down, Boston College. That's Stratford, and whistle stop him. Boston College moving around, exceeded the 25 second clock, and gets the five yard penalty. Dead ball foul. Delay game. Offense. 25 second clock. So mounted in the corners here. They're plainly clearly visible at both ends of the stadium. The one thing, the new rule of the clock starting after a penalty, if it wasn't dead otherwise, kind of helps dead ball move foul. that clock along. Delay a bit. game. Offense. First down. And 15. That's it. He starts the clock. Yep. There winds the clock. Nothing Ball is back near the 44. Ah! Flutie straight back. Has time. Has to go short with it. Hits Brennan at the 40. He's knocked down immediately by Scott Radisick. Radisick has really been outstanding here in the second half. I'm purely amazed at the mobility of Radisick, number 97, the big linebacker of Penn State. And watching the film yesterday, the way he moves back on pass coverage is something really to see. A big man like that with that, with those quick feet, it's really a sensational player. Marvin McKenzie replaces Brennan for the play. Again, they're moving people around. They've got six seconds to snap it. Gets it off. On second down and 11. To the sideline. Pass complete to Phelan. It's down at the Penn State 21 and a Boston College first down. Picture perfect pattern by Phelan. Phelan is going to go down, fans. The key is go as deep as you can and then come back to the passer because that keeps you the same distance away from the defensive man as you were when you made your cut. So you can see that the side of number 27 has no chance. Flutie hit him right on the target. This is only the fifth time that a team has run up 500 yards or more against a Joe Paterno Penn State ball club. BC did it last year, but they lost big. The pass away in a hurry, complete to Gieselman. Inside the 15 at the 14. So he goes back to his big tight end. You go to your tight end on the blitz. You have to because he's the shortest throw, the one that you can make the most accurate, and Flutie was ready to throw it very quickly. He didn't drop all the way back, and therefore it was a completed pass. Four minutes to play in the game. 24-17, Austin College leading. Stratford in motion. Moody gives it to Beastick. Nothing. I think he lost some on it. He lost a yard. A hit or miss play like that is 
really a, a low low percentage play the trap up the middle with a blitz on is not a high percentage call Brennan Phelan they come back in now ball is back at the 16 it is third down and five well they're in Kevin Snow's range they'll remember the win he's got to go into it if he has to settle for a field goal try Rudy pressure they sacking back around the 23 Keith the one thing that Flutie did not want to happen was to get sacked he wanted to get rid of the ball and uh, not lose that yardage as you've already mentioned going into the win a big factor they're going to try the field goal Kevin Snow comes out he'll kick it from the 30 so that makes it a 40 yard field goal and from 40 0 for 1 He's six out of 11 for the season. Kick is up, a lot of leg. He made it. His longest field goal of 40 yards. With two minutes and 28 seconds to play in the game. The Lions were trying to stack it up high and get a hand on it. They couldn't quite reach it. And with 2.28 yeah. to play, it is a 10-point lead for Boston yeah. College. Yeah. Oh. Bow is the man they want to handle it. And he will at the 15. Then held it up. And Kevin Bow gets up to around the 23-24 before they bring him down. Penn State. Coming off of that last 80 yard touchdown drive, still have confidence. They've pulled games out before. They're going to have to go to the air on virtually every down, and I would expect Boston College to play very, very conservative. Penn State only has one timeout left. And footnote it with this that Boston College has never beaten Penn State. They were 0 for 11 against the Lions coming into this ball game. Crane gives the ball to Dozier, and Dozier is game tackled up near the 28. So oh, that's a pickup of four. It'll be second down six. That's a very strange call, Keith. Used up about uh, 20 seconds on the clock, 25. Strange pass away. Bow! Boom! Midfield. Hurt. But he held on to the ball. And the two men who collided, Tony Thurman, the free safety, and Kevin Bow, the receiver, both shake it up on the play. Bow has been a marvel in this ball game. Keith, he's been he's been a good football player since he came to, to uh, Penn State four years ago. He had a knee operation in his sophomore year and missed some play and was slow recovering. But watch the catch. The right part of your screen, you're going to see Thurman really collide right into Bow. Bow holds on to the ball. Both of them are injured on the play. Hope not, hopefully not seriously. Watch the route. The inside routes have been open, and they're the toughest to throw, and Strang has been sensational throwing this type of pass. The ball is down. He doesn't elevate it up to where it's dangerously overthrown. It's right in the bread basket where the instant hit by Thurman does not knock the ball loose. Thurman gets up. He's going to walk off the field. Bow is still down. It is interesting to me, Frank, that Kevin Bow at 5'9 and 175 yeah, and yeah, Brian Brennan, yeah. the uh, wide receiver for Boston College at 5'10, 180. I don't know that I've seen a better performance by two wide people all year. Maybe Irving Fryer, but that would be the only one. Keith, going into this ball game, we discussed that both teams have outstanding receivers. Phelan and Jackson on the other side are being double covered a lot, and that's what's forcing the single coverage to Bow. Uh, both teams just outstanding, and, and uh, Bow, of course, has been uh, phenomenal holding on the ball on those deep passes in the middle. You don't normally send your smallest man down the middle, but Bow has gone down there to catch eight for 97 yards. Brennan's gone down the middle for 12 and 179 yards. Here are the numbers of just what Keith was talking about. Eight receptions, 97, 12. He wants to play wants some to, more. Come on out of there, Kevin. He has to come out or they lose their last time out. It's first down at midfield for Penn State. This is Mumford running it up the middle and struggles down to the 40, falls across it and gets a first down for Penn State. And time, one minute, 43 seconds to play. 
Kenny Jackson, the great receiver, is not in the ball game. There he is up yeah, the top of the he picture. Is. He's yeah. up at the top of the picture wide. Straight back. Going deep down the middle for Robinson. No. Tim Robinson. Covered by George Ratachowski. Pete Carmichael, the defensive backfield coach, told me that Ratachowski really has quick feet. 4-3 speed is the best man-on-man -man player they've had. He's playing the ball. The key is play the ball at his height. And Ratajkowski goes up and does get his hands on the ball at the very height. Otherwise, it could have been a reception. Second down and 10. Ball is just over the 40 from the 39. Spring goes down the middle with it in 10. No, most intercepted by Ratajkowski. He had shot it down the middle toward Kevin Bow, who had come back into the lineup. And number 15 had it and couldn't hold it. Those passes throwing into a defense playing pass require a perfect throw. This time was the first one that Strang is overthrown, dangerously overthrown, and could have been intercepted. As we look at Jack McNell, I told uh, Keith earlier, he's such a cheerful guy. He just felt like they had a legitimate chance in this game today. Third down and 10 for Penn State. Minute and 25 to play. Goes to Dozier. He's caught and brought down by number 50, David Thomas, the defensive end. And he picked up on the play about two yards. So it is fourth down and eight. And a timeout call by Penn State. That is their last one. Time remaining in the football game. 115. Boston College leading by 10. On fourth down and eight, they capture him behind the line of scrimmage. He left-handed the ball away, trying to get it to Skeeter Nichols, and he couldn't do it. Mike Ruth was the man that had a hold of him. And what a football game Mike Ruth has played. In fact, what a great game the entire defensive team has played just against an outstanding offense of Penn State. The Boston College defensive coaches are to be praised as that man right there told me yesterday they had a legitimate chance to win this game, and they have done it. Great coverage here. Ruth number 68, relentless pressure. Won't give up. Goes through the blockers and comes back in and makes the play. All Penn State now has to do is snap the ball a couple of times and get the clock rolling. Flutie falls down at the 35, Penn State, with no timeouts remaining in the football game, and you've got one minute to play. So for Jack McNell and these Golden Eagles of Boston College, it is a glorious moment because BC has never beaten Penn State. Flutie today, 24 out of 43 for 380 yards, picked up 28 running, total offense 408. He had 520 last year against Penn State. In this ball game, Brian Brennan has tied a single season receiving record for Boston College with 46 catches. He will break it and become the new record holder. To further footnote what Kevin Bow did in the ball game and so much it over the middle where there's so much punishment. He caught eight for 97 yards for Penn State and Joe Paterno's ball club. Boston College jumped out to a big 21 nothing lead. Looked like they were going to fly away into the night. But didn't work out that way as the Nittany Lions got together at halftime, came back and made it a whale of a football game. And Boston College will start its celebration as they have finally defeated Penn State by a score of 27 to 17. So Penn State's record will go to five and four now as the two coaches meet in the center of the field and Boston College's record will go to six and one. And I would say that Boston College didn't show all that much rustiness having been off for two weeks. Like I said, the party's on for OBC. 